Uh, thank you for a uh, wonderful lecture. I'm attorney Arnel Casanova. I'm the executive director of Asia Society. My question is also related to what uh, DJ had uh, uh, asked. But somehow, uh, you have stated that the three uh, fundamentals would be culture, uh, uh, geography, and institutions. I would like to ask about the, uh, um, the um, issue of technology. Because I think, um, uh, what is your view on the impact of, for example, the invention of the, uh, the steam engine on the dropping off of uh, the cost of, uh, of sea uh, transport? And also the, the nature of mechanization of certain industries, which, which uh, allow the companies, particularly those who are in the uh, uh, colony, uh, on the colonies that for, for the more uh, imperial powers to extract resources on a greater, faster, and faster scale than they could have been before the invention of this, uh, these machines. So what could have been the, uh, and which I, I think reduced simply those who are in the colonies as simply manpower uh, providers. So could you further elaborate on that, please? Thank you. Oh my. Um, well, first of all, a lot of the, the um, examples you were citing had to do with the positive effects of technological transfer. Um, uh, steam engines and other technologies being delivered to, uh, to countries which did not develop those technologies themselves, but uh, imported them from abroad. Being a colony make, may make that easier. Uh, indeed, uh, uh, Niall Ferguson has argued that empire was good um, because it did many things, and that's one of them. It facilitated the transfer of technology and also the, the spread of financial resources. Um, it's clear, however, that uh, the colonies simply have their hands tied in terms of uh, the policies they can pursue. And if they want to pursue pro-growth or pro-industrial policies, uh, the, uh, the colonists uh, uh, may not be in their interest, probably not in their interest, and they will suppress it. But when you look at those economies that had autonomy, like all of Latin America who won their independence in the 1820s or roundabout, and then see how they perform uh, with that autonomy. Uh, and uh, you observe they are beset by the same kinds of political economy problems uh, that, uh, that maybe the Philippines is today, uh, which tends to make it very difficult to pursue coherent pro-industrial and, and, um, and pro-growth policies, but rather instead uh, pursue policies that reward those who have political power. And that will be true in terms of trade policy and tariff policy and internal policies with banking and, and transportation. So it's not clear whether autonomy will necessarily get you more growth. It'll give you independence to make your own mistakes, uh, but it won't necessarily give you more growth. And I think the evidence as we look at it uh, shows that it didn't. And that's true, uh, by the way, of Africa since independence uh, in the 1960s. Uh, so we don't have to appeal to the older evidence for Latin America in the 1820s. Both those two, part, two regions underwent uh, about a half century of what we call lost decades uh, of you know, very poor or no growth uh, performance at all uh, with uh, coups and political instability and and civil war and bloodshed and so on. Um, so uh, the world is complex and getting autonomy gives you a lot of things. <laughs> and they aren't all positive for growth. <laughs>